Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Hello and welcome. I'm Jeffrey Mishlove. Today we're going to talk about psychic healing techniques. With me is Stephen Schwartz, who is a founder of the International Society for the Study of Subtle Energies in Energy Medicine. He is also a columnist for the journal Explore, the Journal of Science and Healing. In addition, he is the uh, author of many books, including The Secret Vaults of Time, The Alexandria Project, Opening to the Infinite, and The Eight Laws of Change, How to Become an Agent for personal and social transformation. He is also the former editor of the journal Subtle Energies. Welcome, Stephen. Pleasure. Now, in our previous interviews, we've talked quite a bit about research on psychic healing and your own research in which you uh, worked with practitioners who had uh, came from many different backgrounds, right. some religious and uh, orthodox uh, Christian, uh, and other backgrounds as well, very non-Christian approaches to healing. And uh, I imagine there are even uh, non-sectarian or non-religious approaches as well. Absolutely. I mean, therapeutic touch, which mm -hmm. Dolores Krieger and, and um, Doris Kuntz uh, uh, came up with that is being practiced as we speak by thousands of nurses all over the world was a non-sectarian or non-religious healing technique. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been at this a long time. And my takeaway now on all of this, whether it's meditation techniques or whether it's remote viewing techniques or whether it's healing techniques, is that all of it is ritual behavior. Mm -hmm. And the function of the ritual behavior is to allow you to open and access the non-local aspect of your consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so at a certain level, if the technique works, use it. There are some techniques that I think may be simpler or easier for people to use. I um, am very resistant and um, not in agreement with anybody who claims my technique, our technique, is the technique, mm -hmm. the best technique. The, whatever. Mm -hmm. Because, as I say, I, I have come to see all of this as ritual behavior mm -hmm. with the purpose of allowing you to open to this non-local aspect of yourself. The idea that consciousness is fundamental and causal and that there is a part of you that is eternal and uh, we Which is about sort of what you mean by non-local consciousness. By, I, I, I think of non-local consciousness as that aspect of consciousness which is not physiologically based and which is essentially eternal. Mm -hmm. And I use the word eternal as opposed to immortal or, or something because I don't know how long it lasts. Mm -hmm. I, we just don't know. But it is that aspect of consciousness which is a portion, a part of, uh, as, as in fact is space-time itself, in this vast unity of the omega, con or, you know, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. Um, and so in healing, there are many ways to approach healing. Self-healing, uh, we talked about that in the meditation uh, section we did. Yes but healing for others, and there are again many techniques for doing that. The main thing that all of the successful techniques do is to allow you to attain and sustain focused awareness. Mm -hmm. And so if you're going to develop a technique, the first and foremost thing I would tell you is you want to develop a technique that works for you that allows you to attain and sustain this non-local mm -hmm. consciousness of contact. Some people think of it in terms of invoking a higher power, not themselves. And other people think of it in terms of they are visualizing, uh, sending energy or sending light right. 
to to the person. And I've often heard it described that as these are two different kinds of methods, but uh, they're not. Mm -hmm. I mean, first of all, nothing's being sent. That's for starters. It's not energy. Uh, at least that's what the research is telling me. It's not mm -hmm. energy. Um, you're not you're not um, linking with something greater than yourself in the sense that you are somehow separate from it in the first place. That arises from the idea that consciousness arises from materiality. Mm -hmm. Once you get, and this is a major existential change, once you get that consciousness is the causal and fundamental aspect, mm -hmm. then you realize that what we call space-time, physical reality, what uh, Einstein called the optical delusion, um, what, once you understand that, really comprehend the that. The optical delusion. delusion. That's a yeah, great I always phrase. love that one. <laughs> you know, they, they, they asked Einstein, and he said, well, you know, we all have, we suffer from this optical delusion that we are separate and yeah. apart, and, and, and we struggle in our lives with tr making these connections. And, yeah. um, you open your eyes and you think, well, there's the world out there yes. and me in here, as it's, if they're separate. Yes. So first of all, I mean, it's not, it's, you're not separate. Uh, healing, as far as I can see, based on the research that I, the, mm -hmm. the, exper the experimental data and my own experiences, is really a function of linkage. Mm -hmm. of, but not, I mean, in a sense, we're always linked, but one becomes aware of the linkage. Yeah. And one holds intention that the linkage will have a therapeutic effect. Mm -hmm. And so all meditation techniques, these ritual behaviors, whether they're religious or non-religious, I mean, that that's just a personal choice. What they're all about is acknowledging this fundamental unity and this linkage and then holding intention, therapeutic intention, for another individual. Mm -hmm. But it can also be done for oneself. Yes. And so a technique for doing that, I mean there are many techniques, but I just a technique, is uh, it's rather like meditation. You pick a time, you pick a place, and again the reason you pick a time and you pick a place is that you have to convince yourself you're serious. Trust me, your consciousness knows when um, you're not really serious about mm -hmm. it. So you have to convince yourself you're serious. It's about developing a discipline. Mm -hmm. I mean, a discipline is essentially a way of producing focused attention and sustaining it. Mm -hmm. So you find your time, you find your place, wherever you want to do it, and um, this is one where you can actually do it lying down. Mm -hmm. You know what I find myself doing, because I do practice healing, mm -hmm. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night mm -hmm. and I'm wide awake, but I don't want to get out of bed because it, it's dark out and yeah, it's the middle of the night. Yeah, it's in the middle of the night. So that's my time for practicing healing. Okay, well that's a good time. Yeah. Again, I, I mean there's no particular time, but mm -hmm. that for you is a good time. So yeah. that's a good example right. of what I mean by picking your time in your place. Mm -hmm. So there you are. You're. Uh, let's say you're lying down in your bed, mm -hmm. and um, you you close your eyes, you take a deep breath, you let it out, you take a deep breath, you let it out, you take a deep breath, you let it out, and as you do that, you clear your mind like a pool. And one, this is a technique. I want to mm -hmm. stress that. that, it, that the, the ritual is less important than the attaining and sustaining of, of attention. Yeah. I, I totally agree yeah. uh, with you there, and, and what I find for myself is it's as if there's a threshold. I begin by saying certain words to yes. myself, like heal, 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 yeah. and, uh, but there's a moment, it doesn't always happen, mm -hmm. but it happens pretty consistently, right. actually, where I find myself in a state of consciousness where I'm no longer just 
doing some kind of rote repetition of words where right. I become, uh, uh, let me put it this way, I become absolutely convinced without any doubt that this is really happening. Yes, you are in a state of, you have attained and you are sustaining a state of focused intention yeah. awareness. Mm -hmm. So there you are. It permeates my whole body. That's right. And so now in this state, in your self-healing, you then visualize yourself seeing the ally of your body. Now, that can you know, take any form you want. Some people see them as animals or birds or butterflies. It doesn't make any difference. Whatever works, you'll, it, it will become apparent to you what you invest in. Mm -hmm. And you see your ally, and then you, let's say, you've uh, 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 sprained your ankle. Mm -hmm. And so you ask your ally to join you in, in healing your ankle, and you go down and you focus on your ankle, and you imagine in your mind that you and your ally are creating a, an environment uh, surrounding your ankle in light, surrounding it in warmth, surrounding it in, in healing vibrations. It, uh, because it is a ritual behavior, it is much less important what the particular imagery mm -hmm. is than that you are able to attain and sustain it. And, and then you, you know that that's your focus. That's right. Yeah. And so you see yourself healing this part of yourself. Mm -hmm. You see it. Um, you see the, the the you can actually picture the muscles and the, and you can see that it's all moving back into its proper order mm -hmm. and that. Uh, that the body is being restored to its proper balance and health. Yeah, and you know, speaking just for myself, when I find that I'm for sick, if I have a cold or a sprain or, or something, what I will do when I'm in that space where I know that I am really connecting, whether I might be de totally deluded, but I'm certainly feeling this with a great deal of certainty, I'll also say, and now everyone else in the city or sometimes in the whole world who is suffering from this particular uh, malady that I'm suffering from, let's send healing to every one of them at yes. the same time. Yes, I w actually, uh, you that's very synchronistic. I, I was just about to say, <laughs> once you complete this healing with yeah. yourself, it's very helpful to pass it along, as it were, yeah. because you are now in a state where you are linked mm -hmm. with the greater unity of consciousness. Right. And so exactly what you say, you say, everybody that has a sprained ankle, mm -hmm. I surround them, their ankle in light, or I send healing to them, however you want to mm -hmm. visualize it and verbalize it in your mind. But again, the key to the thing is you've You've attained and you're sustaining a very focused intention that there's going to be healing. Now, can that really work? Well, again, if we go back to the placebo research and we see that 35 to 40 percent of the people who get the sugar pill, as opposed to the people who get the actual medication, that's a bench. Uh, placebo is essentially a self healing phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. I mean, the placebo effect is essentially psychophysical self-regulation in self-healing. Mm -hmm. And so you want to you you are tapping into that same aspect of yourself that allows you to have the positive placebo effect. And no, it doesn't work every time, but remarkably consistently. Just as in placebo research, we know that about 35 to 40 percent of the people will do as well or better. That's the interesting mm -hmm. thing. Better mm -hmm. than the people that get the sugar, the treated pill. Yeah. Uh, then, so with self healing, you can do this, and you just do this every day. You just take a few moments every day. You get in a quiet space, lie down, you take your deep breath, you relax. You call upon the healing powers of your body, which is what the ally is. Mm -hmm. So you see your ally. That's just a way of visualizing mm -hmm. it. It's sort of a shamanistic approach. Yes. Yeah, well, there's a reason why shamanistic approaches develop. See, all of these things, the, the interesting thing that to, to, to think about, Jeff, is that 
all of those shamanic techniques or the Ayurvedic medicine or acupuncture, um, all of those techniques are, are, are examples of uh, empirical science. They're mm -hmm. based on observation, not objective measurement with uh -huh. instruments and mm -hmm. things like that. Well, and, William James would call radical empiricism. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. And varieties of religious experience, by the way, as long as we're mentioning William James, is one of those books that everybody ought to read mm. because it's remarkably insightful. But in any case, so you, you visualize your shamanic or however you want to visualize it, your ally, mm -hmm. which is the, the natural healing powers of the mind and the consciousness and over the mm -hmm. body. And you see your ankle if you're in the sprained ankle or whatever. I, I mean, there, if you look at the, the case studies of about healing, not the uh, objectively measurable stuff, but, but just accounts that people mm -hmm. give, I mean, there are accounts of people who cured themselves of cancer, that cured themselves of, of all kinds of diseases. I, I, when I was doing my research on water, I went over to Lourdes and I had a, I had an acquaintance with a, a, a priest who was the Pope's advisor on parapsychology. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's still alive. I haven't had, talked to him in a long time, but because the they do very rigorous research on the healings yes. at, at Lourdes, yes, extremely rigorous, mm -hmm. and 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 through this priest, I was able to get permission to go into the Lourdes archives, mm -hmm. and I what I went through is yes, they are extremely rigorous, but I found eighty four cases of what they describe as miraculous mm -hmm. healings, like kneecaps appearing. Yeah. I mean, really outrageous things, stuff. Things that are inexplicable in terms of medical science. That's right. That's what they look for. That's right. And, and for instance, I witnessed a Shoshone medicine man named Rolling Thunder do a healing to this day. I would find it hard to explain mm -hmm. how he did it. He healed a young man uh, who had a really grievous muscular wound yeah. as a result of an accident. Mm -hmm. And when he was through... You know, when you lose a scab, you have that tight pink skin. Yeah. And where this kid had had a wound down to the bone, 20 minutes later, it, or maybe 30 minutes later, it was completely healed, and it just had that tight pink look like the scab had just come off. And, I mean, this was witnessed in front of about 35 doctors. Mm-hmm. And none of us. We went into what I think of as reality vertigo. I know that you wrote a chapter about this in Stanley Krippner's anthology yeah. uh, about Rolling Thunder. And in Parabola magazine, The Mist mm -hmm. Wolf. Yeah. And so, uh, I mean, it was astonishing. Mm -hmm. And when I was doing that Lourdes research, I came across, as I say, 84 cases. I mean, they have hundreds, but these 84 really stood out. Uh, Michael Murphy in The Future of the Body did similar research and looked at the same data mm -hmm. and, and reports something quite yeah. similar. And the, but the point I'm trying to make is that the power that we have to exert psychophysical self-regulation is vastly greater mm -hmm. than we understand. Yeah. That there are, I mean, you literally can heal bones, you can heal muscle, and that what healers are doing is linking up with you and awakening in you the capacity to do this. It isn't that they're sending something, although that's the way it gets discussed usually, but I think it is. the data is telling mm -hmm. us something different. It's telling us there's some form of linkage and the intention of the healer mm -hmm. quickens you and allows you mm -hmm. to pr produce the healing. Well, in the same technique, in a yeah. self-healing technique, you can do that mm -hmm. using your ally technique, mm -hmm. and you can send that healing out to many other people so that they yeah. can also enjoy those benefits. I uh, many years ago interviewed a, yeah, an 80-year-old Sufi lady from India, Irina Tweedy, uh, who I imagine is passed on by now, but she was a healer, and uh, she told me that her teacher, her Sufi master, told her uh, one truth about healing, which uh, stuck with me, and that is, we can heal anything, we just can't heal anyone. Yes, 
Yes, I mean, I, and once you, again, you know, the, the Sufi master mm-hmm. is speaking from this same perspective of consciousness being the fundamental and causal. Yes. And once you see that, well, then materiality mm-hmm. can be manipulated. And we think of the normal physiological limitations. And yet, when you look at mm-hmm. the thousands of case studies of placebo, or you look at the, these cases at Lourdes yeah. or other places, you see over and over and over again, there are these extraordinary stories that are witnessed by lots of people. They check them out, they work. Nobody quite understands what happened, mm-hmm. but nonetheless, the person was they healed. They totally defy what we think of as the normal laws of yes. physics, the, the, the way the universe operates regularly. This is, yes. this is very special, but it happens uh, periodically over and over and over again. Yes, and it happens because individuals learn to hold this focused awareness mm-hmm. and express this intention of therapeutic well-being. Mm-hmm. And I, I think from my own experience and from other accounts uh, that it, if you enter into this state where you're feeling total certainty, where all doubt has disappeared, that that is I would say, psi-conducive. That's a state of mind in which things are likely to happen. Yeah, when I, yeah absolutely. When, when I was the special assistant to the chief of naval operations, uh, I remember that the, the, that the, the medical office of the Navy mm-hmm. sent around a, a report because they had accumulated a bunch of these things. I mean, a number of these cases yeah. of these extraordinary stories of soldiers who would get these grievous wounds that yeah. should have killed them. Mm-hmm. And they would lie. I remember one that really stands out. It was about a Marine uh, who had taken several rounds in the chest, Ooh. which uh, one right next to the heart, which should have killed him. Mm-hmm. The doctor who wrote the report up said, this man is alive only because of a miracle, and I'm not religious. <laughs> anyway, he had lain in the field because of these fights that were going on around him, and he lay there for an entire day. He didn't bleed out. He didn't, his heart didn't, which was damaged, didn't uh, give out. I mean, everything that you would normally think would happen to a man who took two rounds in the chest. Mm-hmm for some reason, didn't happen. Mm-hmm. He was wounded. I mean, they had to pick him up and take him away in a litter. But And when they asked him what happened, his description was, I was lying there, and when I realized nobody was going to come and help me because the battle was still going on, mm-hmm. and only I was going to keep myself alive, I thought of my children, and as I thought of them, I felt myself move in my body and I knew I would be okay. Mm -hmm. And that's a power that is within us and that we can tap when we need it. You know, it reminds me of another fascinating story having to do with uh, one of the Spanish conquistadors (laughs) uh, here in uh, North America uh, several hundred years ago who had been... uh, if I recall the story correctly, uh, had been buried alive. With, it, it, well, as I, I believe what it was, he was hiding. He was being chased by natives, and he was hiding. So to hide from them, he essentially buried himself alive. Maybe his head was, you know, just enough to breathe. And he had spent like 24 or 36 hours in this condition. And then he was found. I think the natives found him in this condition. But when he came out, he had acquired, as a result of this experience, healing ability hmm. and, and was re- became revered by the natives as a great healer. Hmm. Oh, I would like to see that story. Yeah, yeah well, that, I mean, if you look through the, 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 the records of the cultures of humanity across mm-hmm. time and geography, mm-hmm. You see this kind of thing again and again, and, and it's easy to dismiss it as, oh, well, it's bad reporting, it's just magical thinking, and mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. But the fact is, you see over and over again this a capacity to control physical functioning down to the cellular level mm-hmm. and to produce outcomes which, based on our normal understanding of how the body works, ought to be impossible. Yeah. And yet they aren't. And so I think that that should really be taken 
as a guide that you can do this. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the next step, I think, well, there are many next steps. Uh, I can think of many next steps. But one uh, very important one to look at is healing society, healing some of the ills that we have. Uh, can we apply this sort of healing uh, to ecological awareness? Absolutely. Or, I mean, personally, I, I uh, uh, in my meditations, I always ask, can I be a channel of peace to all with whom I come in contact? Mm -hmm. And it's that what you're doing is changing the nature of your beingness. Mm -hmm. And when you change the nature of your beingness, abilities emerge that you had no idea you possessed. If we change our beingness, if we become ch channels of healing or channels of peace, we can impact the world in ways that our social station or economics or race or religion or whatever would say couldn't happen. Mm -hmm. And yet, over and over again, they do. And, and I think that's true. Things that many of us can't even imagine today are things that we may be doing tomorrow. That's right. Stephen Schwartz, once again, what a delight to have this conversation with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for being with us. Thank you.